Hello, world changers. We have one final chapter in Kingdom Keepers. I'm so excited to read it. Remember, in the last chapter, they had tricked Maleficent and tried to give her some fake pens. And she ended up flying back, getting hurt. But then, electricity from the server room had ended up powering her up. Last chapter. Let's see what happens. Chapter 33. Finn hit the tunnel running. Behind him raced a blur of green and black as Maleficent sped through the air, her arms pointing in front of her and leading the way, closing the distance. The boys ran side by side now, Maleficent behind them and closing in fast. Like a shell game, the boys passed the plans back and forth between them, then switched positions as they ran and passed the plans again. For someone behind them, where Maleficent now followed, it grew impossible to determine which boy had the plans. Then, just as Maleficent was nearly upon them, the boys split up, running in three different directions. Maybach mumbled, perhaps a little too loudly for his own good. I've got them, don't worry, just run. Finn took an exit door to the left. He raced up the stairs at a furious speed, glancing behind. No Maleficent, she had followed Maybach. Finn broke into blinding daylight. He checked the tubes of paper tucked into his waist, thrilled the plan had worked. Fresh air, park music. For a moment, Finn couldn't figure out where he was. A cast member door led out into Tomorrowland. That was wrong. He was out of position. Finn fled through the door and out onto the busy concourse. At midday, the area bustled with activity. A steady stream of guests in a chaotic mass of t-shirts, shorts, and a sweet smell of suntan lotion. How long would it take for Maleficent to discover their trickery? The plan had been to rendezvous with Amanda on the bridge between Tomorrowland and the Central Plaza. Which way? Finn had left the Utilidor via the wrong exit. He heard the crowd scream to his right. He was familiar with all sorts of sounds in the Magic Kingdom, but this particular lore, roar sounded out of place. A second later, Maybach came out of the same cast member's only door. He was out of breath and sweating. She's after Philby, he told Finn. Another scream broke from the distance. Some little kid shouted, Aladdin, Aladdin! He cut through the thick crowds to reach Maybach who they mistook for the character. Maybach tried to get away from them. Parents called after their kids to be polite. A line formed behind Maybach as he and Finn set out walking. Maybach said under his breath, we should have lost the wardrobe. I don't know, Finn said, maybe we can use this. He handed Maybach some of the pens. You're kidding me. The children caught up and surrounded them both, their autograph notebooks out and ready. Sign some autographs, Aladdin, Finn said encouragingly. With clenched teeth, Maybach asked in a whisper, How do you spell Aladdin? Finn spelled it out for him as yet another excited scream pealed from the crowd, this time much closer. A sea of park guests parted to his right. A green witch. Maleficent. She walked quickly and deliberately and was just scary enough looking to hold the admirers at bay. Head down, Finn called out. Maybach ducked, continuing to, to scribble out autographs furiously. The green faced witch and her following sea of fans passed them by. Finn backed away from the clock of eager children. That's all, Finn said, though to little effect. Maybach was suddenly hooked on this autograph writing. He made no attempt to stop. Aladdin, Philby called out, you're going to be late. Maybach finally gave up. He made his apologies and he and Finn moved on. The crowd up ahead, the group following Maleficent stopped, colliding into one another. This because the witch had stopped and turned. But why? Finn moved in another direction. He came face to face with Jess. Give us the pens and the plans. And we won't hurt you, she said. Several things happened at once. First, Finn spotted a group of four or five seagulls clustered atop of a high white fence. Then he saw Amanda. She stood inside the same white fence, the gulls perched overhead. She signaled Finn to join her. Third, Jez reached for the plans and stole them from Maybach. Go, Finn ordered Maybach, and there, were Phil and there was Philby standing next to Amanda, also backing them over the fence. Finn dove at Jez, knocked her down, and took the plans back. She set up on the pavement, mumbled something, and cast a spell on Finn. He felt a sharp pain flood through him. His knees went completely weak. That dreaded sense of cold overcame him. Jez smiled at her success. 
got to her feet and stepped toward him. Finn fought against the spell by thinking of himself as pure light, as a DHI, even though he was just Finn Whitman, the boy. He allowed her, her no power overcome him, refusing to give in to her. As he did, something strange happened. His fingers tingled. A woman in the crowd gasped. Oh my gosh, look who it is. Finn was crossing over without sleeping. He was becoming his DHI. He mentally pushed against Jez. The harder he pushed, the more of his body turned to light, a hologram. The next spell she ca tried to cast passed right through him and turned a small tree just behind him with solid ice. The crowd applauded and cheered. Children shouted, more, more. Jez lunged at Finn, but she too passed right through him. Again, the crowd cheered. She dared to try again. This time, Finn stepped into her and stopped. He moved with her in perfect lockstep, able somehow to know her every thought. She spun in circles, trying to rid himself of him. There was a single entity now, spinning and glowing. Two kids in one. The crowd went wild. Finn resisted the cold. He felt warmth replace it. He heard her calling out, your grace. She sounded desperate and afraid. The crowd roared with approval, a spinning vortex of light and the girl's wild, wild cries for help. Finn stepped away from her and Jez spun to a stop, dazed. She raised her head slowly while studying her arms, hit her hands, her arms, touching her forearms as if they didn't belong to her. I can't believe it. As her eyes met Finn's, she cried out, I'm free. Free from what, Finn wondered. You did it, Jess said to Finn, her eyes bright, her voice excited. No more cold, no more Maleficent. You, you freed me. With that, the most startling thing happened. Jez changed, she transformed before Finn's eyes. The crowd applauded as her hair changed color from jet black to a sandy blonde. Her eyebrows and eyelashes became lighter as well, and a few freckles appeared on her cheeks. She was, without hesitation, a different girl. A beautiful girl, and yet familiar. Finn couldn't get over the feeling that he'd met her before, and he'd known her, this new girl. And then, as he glanced back to her friends and saw Amanda there calling for him, a spike of astonishment filled him, and he felt the DHIs dissolve and the real Finn return. Amanda's face filled with light, with an expression of joy Finn had never seen. Tears filled her eyes. Finn looked back and forth between the two girls, Jez and Amanda, and it couldn't be, but it was. They were sisters, twins, not identical, but pretty close. And then did he understand Amanda's efforts, her never giving up. Only then did he wonder if Amanda wasn't some kind of witch herself, but a good witch. The crowd exploded into celebration. Maleficent's green form streaked toward them. As Finn, a boy again, reached the fence, he faced Amanda. Why didn't you tell me? You weren't ready, she said. Amanda stood in front of a large yellow cylinder sticking out of the ground with a thick circular steel trap door on top. A number of warning posters instructed proper use. The others went ahead. Amanda said, go. Finn looked back. But it's a trash chute. Go, feet first. She opened it, quickly, jump. She seemed distracted. Finn followed her line of sight. Maleficent had caught up to Jez, but Jez held out hands in front of her. And try as Maleficent might, she could not get close enough to the girl. Raging with anger, Maleficent suddenly saw Finn. Finn asked Amanda, is Jez who I think she is? Jess, not Jez, not anymore. How can we ever thank you? The tears spilled from her eyes. We couldn't break the spell ourselves. Then she is, then you are, Finn's head swam but he stopped himself as Maleficent raised her hand to cast a spell. Seeing this, Finn jumped down the trash chute. From high overhead, he heard Amanda's gleeful voice echo as she fell. I'll never forget what you did. As he was sucked down the foul smelling tube, Finn tucked the roll of plans away under his belt. He took a deep breath and gagged. He thought he might roll up. The tube reeked of rotting trash gooey bits of sticky globs of rancid food and soggy litter stuck to him like leeches, licked his face and slopped into his hair and clothing. Again, he felt himself gag. In the distance, far down the tube, echoing through the metal, Finn heard hoots and hollers, Maybach and Philby. 
The situation spit trash into his face. He slammed into some kind of mesh gate, an intersection of over or of converging trash evacuation tubes. On the other side, black garbage bags and trash raised past. Then the gate opened and it was his turn. He tumbled down and rolled into the next tube, picking up speed and heading off again, upside down and backward. Wind roared all around him. A garbage bag smashed into him. It broke open, its trash freed. Awful stuff raced around him and stuck to him. He braced himself just in time for another intersection. But this gate was open and he moved into a third, larger tube. Aluminum cans peppered his head. Cellophane and cotton candy stuck to him. Diapers, orange peels, sticky popsicle sticks. He somersaulted to avoid the stuff and there behind him came a dull green light. It grew ever larger. He moved quickly. He was thrown into a back somersault. As he came around, he found himself facing Maleficent, arms at her side, head forward, legs outstretched behind her. She flew effortlessly through the garbage tube, apparently unaffected by the suction. Miss me, she wheezed. She lunged, her ice cold hand grabbed for the scroll, then kicked out and pushed her back. Her wide eyes narrowed in hatred. She lunged again, then straightened himself out and gained speed. He briefly pulled away from her. Through the roar, he heard her mumble, Anamia Transformator, then ducked as she flicked her wrist at him. A sandwich bag next to him melted and reformed into a rat. That spell had been melt for him, meant, meant for him. At once, the rat came alive, its tail swiping, its little feet clawing for purchase. Maleficent closed the gap. Finn tore a hole in the garbage bag, scattering its contents. He heard a clank of metal not far ahead, yet another gate. The rat scrambled and scratched at Finn. If he and Maleficent crashed into the gate together, she would have him and the plants. He felt certain of it. She wound up to deliver yet another spell, the two of them racing through the slimy tube. Finn grabbed hold of the clawing rat and threw it at her. Maleficent fought off the rat and came right for Finn. He saw a small white circle grow larger and wider. The end of the tunnel! Then could smell fresh air. Trying to buy himself time, he shouted at her. You forgot something. Evil never wins in the magic kingdom. She called back. That depends on whose magic it is. Propelled out at the end of the trash tube, Finn flew through the air and crashed into a sea of white bags. An enormous steel collection box, like a railroad car, he scrambled toward the edge where he saw Wayne and others, men and women, surrounding the huge collection bin. Hurry, Wayne shouted. Finn reached for the edge, pulled himself up and over and fell to the ground, splatting, soaking wet with trash. There he saw Philby and Maybeck also covered in goo. He watched as Maleficent shot out the end of the trash tube and into the giant collector. The team of adults quickly produced a net, dangling from one end of the other and trapping the inside. To the bus, quickly, Wayne hollered, moving in that direction himself. The other adults worked furiously to secure the net. As Finn ran, he heard Maleficent wails of complaint from Finn. Maybeck, Philby, and Finn caught up to Wayne, the old guy limping along. Finn shouted, we're not going to. No, Finn said, we don't kill anything here, not even witches. We're going to give her a taste of our own jail, the one you found for a while. It'll give us time to determine how much power the overtakers have gained. You've done well, we're almost through. Almost, shouted all three boys, coming to a stop at once. They all boarded the bus. Then handed him the plans and the pens. Wayne looked back gracefully and said, good job, kids. Chapter 34. Looking out the window to the castle apartment, having just crossed over before 10 o'clock, Finn thought the park looked beautiful. He wondered if he ever knew the truth about Amanda, if he'd ever seen her, see her again, for she'd been noticeably absent from school that Monday. He thought about Maleficent saying that there were overtakers far more powerful than she was, and he wondered if more adventures lay in store for him and his new friends. Willow was the last to cross over. She appeared in the room wearing a cotton night nighting gown that flowed to her ankles. To explain this, she said, my mom put me to bed. Nothing more, much I could do about it. Finn looked around at each of his new friends. He liked them all, though all for a different reason. He enrolled the faded blueprints of the park, then examined them, fascinated to see how the park had started out. 
Wayne explained what they were looking at. From the group of pens and pencils on the coffee table, Wayne selected a boring looking black one. It was fat and bulged, a very old fountain pen. Wayne put on a pair of sunglasses. He passed out sunglasses to all the kids too and told them to put them on as well. Now, Wayne said, we're finally put the two together. How will we know if it's right, Ben asked. Wayne's aged face twisted with a smile. Believe me, we'll know. Wayne contemplated the pen, then passed it to Finn. This is for you, I think. He indicated a small metal lever on the end of his pen. Finn picked up the pen, carefully unscrewed the cap, and hooked the small lever with his fingernail. He looked up at each of the others, their expectant eyes filled with curiosity and excitement. Hold it up high, Wayne instructed. Finn did so and pulled on the lever. A single drop of dark ink splashed down into the plants. Finn, Wayne, and all the kids jumped back. The drop of ink settled, then expanded and bled out into each of every faded line drawn onto the plants. It raced from one to another, spreading faster and faster. Faint lines became solid and bold. The detailed plans transformed, one page after another. Some of what Finn was familiar with. An area of frontier land, a piece, a piece of Liberty Square, but much of that was foreign to him. Parts of the park never before seen. Come look, Wayne said, now standing by the small window. He tore the theatrical gel from the window. The kids joined him, squeezing together. Below, the dark park filled with light. Following the same pattern with the ink, it flowed through the plants. Light rushed up lanes and streets, jumped over benches and engorged trees. Attractions came alive first on the outer edge of the Magic Kingdom, but steadily rushing toward the castle. Faster and faster, the light traveled through the park, brighter and brighter. It arrived at the castle from all directions, a brilliant white light racing up the walls. The kids jumped back, blinded. The sky erupted with fireworks, throwing blazing color and light into the heavens, deafening explosions and blinding colors. The local newspapers would report the next day that a private party at Magic Kingdom had been responsible for the most amazing show of fireworks the park had ever seen, but Finn and the other DHIs would know differently. With the sky still erupting outside, Wayne walked over to Finn and extended a hand to thanks. They shook hands. The kids cheered and formed a huddle. As they spinned in celebration, Wayne returned to the coffee table. There, he picked up the blank remote and he pushed the button, sending them back. That is the whole book of Kingdom Keepers. What did you think? Add some comments in. I love this book. I love all things Disney. And I think this book is a great, fantastic book. They defeated the evil. It was awesome. Thanks for joining me. Remember, the world is better because you are in it. Bye, everybody.